Good morning to everyone. I am Dr. Rajini Samuel, Associate Professor of Biochemistry, Sri Sathya Sai Medical College and Research Institute, Chennai, India. My research topic is Paradigm Shift in Understanding and Interpretation of Arterial Bed Gas Reports. The various approaches for arterial bed gas interpretation are the physiological approach, base excess approach, and physicochemical approach by Fensley Stewart. The most commonly used approach for arterial bed gas interpretation is physiological approach, which is based on bicarbonate carbon dioxide buffer system. So pH is equal to pKa plus log of bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid. So most blood gas analysis use the henderson hasselberg equation to calculate bicarbonate values based on the assumption that the dissociation constant of carbonic acid and solubility coefficient of carbon dioxide are invariant. This equation is in logarithm form which can be modified to calculate the bicarbonate value. So modify Henderson equation is H plus hydrogen concentration is equal to 24 into BCO2 divided by bicarbonate. pKa is affected by changes in pH, ionic strength and temperature while the values of Alpha varies with the composition of solution such as the presence of increased salts, proteins or lipids. Therefore, the calculated bicarbonate values may have significant error under certain circumstances. So the physiological approach is very simple and easier, but it is unable to quantify the metabolic component and does not explain the causative mechanism of the metabolic acid-based disturbances. Base excess approach. Standard base excess or the extracellular base excess as a parameter for metabolic acid base disorder is well validated for accuracy and clinical correlation but have been criticized for merely quantifying rather than truly explaining acid base disturbances. The calculation of standard base excess used in most AB generalizer is bicarbonate minus 24.8 plus 16.2 into pH minus 1.4. So the above equation assumes that the total concentration of non-volatile weak acids, ATOT, representative ATOT, is normal. But it is abnormal in severely ill patients, especially in multi-organ failure. So this is a major drawback of this equation. Physicochemical approach. This approach is utilized to explain the causative mechanism of metabolic acid-based disorders. Stewart had proposed a newer concept of acid-based balance. According to Stewart's theory of acid-based balance, Variables namely strong ion difference, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and ATOT, which reflects the plasma concentration of weak non volatile acids, namely albumin and phosphate, are responsible for acid based disturbances. Bicarbonate ions are a marker of metabolic acid based disturbances and not its causative mechanism. The actual bicarbonate and the standard bicarbonate concentrations are approximately equal under normal ventilation. But in hypoventilation and in hyperventilation, the two values differ and deviate from each other. So based on this, some novel ratios are derived. So ratio 1 is bicarbonate divided by standard bicarbonate. And ratio 2 is bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid minus standard bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid. Or ratio 2 can be represented also bicarbonate minus standard bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid. So the difference between ratio 1 and ratio 2 is the bicarbonate carbonic acid and standard bicarbonate carbonic acid they are divided. Divided we will get ratio 1. If we find the difference we will get ratio 2. At PCO2 of 40 both bicarbonate and standard bicarbonate values are equal. So the difference is 0. So the ratio 2 is 0 if the ratio 1 value is 1. So it is clearly visible in the graph. The ratio 1 is 1 at PCO to 40. At that value, the ratio 2 is 0 because both the bicarbonate and standard bicarbonate values are equal. As the PCO to increases, the ratio 2 also increases and afterwards the club flattens. The ratio 2 is greater positive for increased PCO2 and greater negative for decreased PCO2 values. 
So another ratio is the modified ratio to which is equal to standard bicarbonate divided by 1.2 minus bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid. So both the ratios, ratio 2 and modified ratio 2 are greater positive for increased BCO2 and greater negative for decreased BCO2. But the advantage of modified ratio 2 is that it clearly demarcates the different PCO2 values. So ratio 2 is bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid minus standard bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid. In the modified ratio 1.2 is taken because already we know standard bicarbonate is a bicarbonate concentration at PCO2 40. At PCO2 40, the concentration of carbonic acid is 1.2. So modified ratio 2, we have taken 1.2. So the ratio 2 is modified. The standard bicarbonate divided by 1.2 minus bicarbonate divided by carbonic acid. And if we plot modified ratio 2 with PCO2, this is will be similar to ratio 2, greater positive for increased PCO2 and greater negative for decreased PCO2. But this clearly demarcates the different PCO2 values. So it seems logical to correlate standard bicarbonate with bicarbonate carbonic acid concentration of 1.2. Application of newly derived ratios. So these ratios are greatly altered in respiratory disorders and also in metabolic acid based disorders associated with respiratory compensations. The alteration of ratio values are minimal in purely metabolic acid based disturbances without respiratory compensation. So these normal ratios render some clues in discriminating various acid based disturbances. Application of compensation rules. So once a major primary acid based disorder is identified based on the arterial pH, PCO2, bicarbonate and standard base excess, the compensation rules will guide to identify the presence of a second primary acid based disorder. If the measured PCO2 is higher than the expected PCO2, then it denotes the presence of respiratory acidosis. And if it is lower, it denotes the presence of respiratory alkalosis. The expected PCO2 is calculated using the compensation rules. Similarly, if the measured bicarbonate value is higher than the expected bicarbonate, then it denotes the presence of metabolic alkalosis. And if it is lower, it denotes the presence of metabolic acidosis. So the difference between the measured and the expected level, either PCO2 or bicarbonate, will indicate the magnitude of the severity. So these are the, the six bicarbonate based bedside rules. These are usually applied for compensation. Similarly, we have compensation rules using standard base excess also. So novel four quadrant graphical tool. The acid based disorders can be classified and plotted in the four quadrant graph using standard base excess in the x-axis and modified ratio to values are the parameter PCO2 minus 40 in the y-axis to analyze the various acid-based disturbances. So each acid-based disorder will occupy any of the four quadrant and the normal will be seen or in the center of the graph. The normal reference range for standard base excess is from minus 2 to plus 2 millimole per liter. So this is the four quadrant graph. Standard base excess is taken in the x-axis and PCO2 minus 40 is taken in the Y axis. So, for if the standard basis value is greater than 2, then it denotes metabolic alkalosis. If it is greater than negative, then minus 2, it denotes metabolic acidosis. So, PCO2 is higher PCO2 values denotes respiratory acidosis and lower denotes respiratory alkalosis. So, similarly, we can plot, plot on the simple acid based disorders towards single axis. The point will be towards single axis, either x axis or y axis. Suppose the point is present in between the axis, in between x axis and y axis, it denotes either compensations or mixed disorders. So I have taken 232 cases and divided into various groups. Respiratory acidosis, alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, alkalosis and miscellaneous groups. All the groups are divided and then I have plotted in the x-axis standard base x is taken and in the y-axis modified ratio 2 is taken. So it only modified ratio 2 is another in the greater positive for increased PCO2 and greater negative for decreased PCO2. So in respiratory acidosis 
modified ratio to be greater positive and respiratory alkalosis modified ratio to be greater negative so if you plot all the cases are all the acid based disorders can be easily plot so if it's towards the x axis positive side of x axis it denotes metabolic alkalosis if it's towards the negative side of x axis it denotes metabolic acidosis if it's towards the positive side of y axis it denotes respiratory acidosis and if it's towards the negative side of y axis it denotes respiratory alkalosis and in between it denotes either compensations or mixed disorders so modified ratio to may, may not clearly denote the different levels of pco2 so this can be corrected by taking pco2 minus 40 the third axis so a graphical tool can be constructed using standard base axis and the parameter pco2 minus 40 so three dimensional graph can be constructed if you merge these two graphs so application of compensation rules in graphical tool suppose if the pco2 minus expected pco2 value is greater positive then the plotted point will shift upward if the plotted point is shifting upward it denotes respiratory acidosis if it is shifting downward it denotes respiratory alkalosis and no shift then denotes only the compensations and no second acid based disorder similarly the bicarbonate minus expected bicarbonate value is greater positive then the plotted point will shift towards right it denotes metabolic alkalosis if it is greater negative the point will shift towards left more negative it denotes metabolic acidosis if no shift if the bicarbonate minus expected bicarbonate value is within certain acceptable limits then it denotes only compensation and no second acid based disorder so graphical tool is constructed standard base x in the x axis and pco2 minus 40 in the y axis various groups are plotted suppose if i plot in this graph if i apply the compensation rule if the point does not move there is no shift for the point it denotes only compensations no second acid based disorder so suppose if the plotted point is shifted upward it denotes presence of a second acid based disorder if it is moving upward upward shift denotes respiratory acidosis if the plotted point after applying compensation rule if it it is shifted downward it denotes respiratory alkalosis similarly the plotted point is shifting towards positive side of the x-axis then right side then it denotes metabolic alkalosis similarly the point shifting towards left greater negative then it denotes metabolic acidosis no shift denotes only compensation presence of no second acid based disorder so physical chemical approach strong ions completely dissociate in solution so it is always present in a fully dissociated state but weak acids partially dissociate in solution so both the undissociated form and the dissociated form are present in the solution so the dissociated form is the anionic component a minus so h plus plus a minus forms ha ha is the undissociated form and dissociated form is the anionic component a minus and atot denotes total concentration of weak acids it includes both the dissociated and the undissociated form and a minus or a minus tot denotes total concentration of dissociated weak acids it denotes only the anionic component only it denotes mainly the sum of the electric charge carried by them mainly albumin and phosphate so steward's acid base parameters the difference between some of the strong cations and strong anions is called the apparent strong ion difference this is balanced by the buffer base to preserve electrical integrity so apparent strong ion difference is equal to some of the strong cations minus some of the strong anions so main cations sodium plus potassium plus calcium plus magnesium minus strong anions chloride plus lactate buffer base includes bicarbonate and a minus a minus denotes concentration of dissociated weak acids mainly albumin and phosphate so buffer base bicarbonate plus a minus is the effective strong ion difference
Anemone is the concentration of dissociated non-volatile weak acids, principally albumin and phosphate. The principal weak acid in plasma is albumin. The formula is determined by Fickey and colleagues are given below. So albumin and phosphate, the anionic component concentration can be calculated using this formula. So the total concentration anion component A minus is equal to concentration of both the albumin and phosphate. This denotes only the dissociated anionic component. According to Stewart's theory, the respiratory acid based disorders are due to alterations in PCO2. This is similar to the traditional approach, but the metabolic disorders are due to primary alterations in strong ion difference and ATOT. ATOT denotes the plasma concentration of weak non volatile acids, mainly albumin and phosphate. According to Stewart's theory, alterations in the concentration of bicarbonate ions are a marker of metabolic acid based disturbances and not its causative mechanism. So, sodium and chloride are the main strong ions and the principal contributors to the strong ion difference. So, main strong ion difference is equal to sodium minus chloride. The role of concentration of weak acids is only minimal, but in critical ill patients with multi organ failure, it plays a significant role in acid based disturbances. Therefore, a decrease in weak acids will lead to alkalosis and an increase in weak acids produces acidosis. Strong ion difference effect. Dehydration and overhydration changes the strong ion difference by concentrating or diluting it respectively. If the concentration of sodium ion is decreased or the concentration of chloride ion is increased, the strong ion difference, sodium minus chloride, the value will decrease. This results in acidosis. Similarly, if the concentration of sodium is increased or the concentration of chloride is decreased, the strong ion difference, sodium minus chloride, will increase. That leads to alkalosis. Strong ion gap is the difference between apparent strong ion difference and the effective strong ion difference. So it denotes unmeasured ions. This concept is similar to the anion gap concept. So strong ion gap is equal to apparent strong ion difference minus effective strong ion difference. So effective strong ion difference or the buffer base is equal to bicarbonate plus A minus. A minus denotes the concentration of dissociated non vital weak acids, mainly albumin and phosphate. So strong ion gap is equal to apparent strong ion difference minus bicarbonate minus a minus TOT. So if only main strong ions are included, then apparent strong ion difference is equal to sodium minus chloride. So if you substitute in the previous formula, we will be getting strong ion gap is equal to sodium minus chloride minus bicarbonate minus ATOT. So already we know anion gap is equal to sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. So if you substitute, we will be getting strong ion gap is equal to anion gap minus ATOT or anion gap is equal to strong ion gap plus ATOT. The ATOT denotes concentration of dissociated non volatile weak acids. So the above relationship between anion gap and strong ion gap will be valid only if the particular ions are considered for calculation. Suppose if we include calcium, magnesium, lactate in the calculation of strong ion gap, then it has to be adjusted. Delta ratio or delta gap is used to assess elevated anion gap metabolic acidosis and evaluate for the presence of mixed acid based disorder. Delta gap is calculated only if the anion gap is elevated. If anion gap is normal, then delta gap calculation is not required. Delta ratio is equal to delta anion gap divided by delta bicarbonate. Or delta gap is equal to delta anion gap minus delta bicarbonate. So delta anion gap is equal to calculated anion gap minus normal anion gap. So if you substitute, we will be getting sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate minus 12. Similarly, delta bicarbonate is equal to 24 minus bicarbonate. So 12 is a, denotes a normal anion gap and here 24 denotes a normal value for bicarbonate. So delta gap or bicarbonate gap is equal to delta anion gap minus delta bicarbonate. So if we substitute, we will be getting the answer sodium minus chloride minus 36. So already we know sodium and chloride are the principal contributors for the strong ion difference effect. So sodium minus chloride denotes the main strong ion difference. So delta gap is equal to main strong ion difference minus 36. So modified using modified Anderson equation, 
we can calculate bicarbonate. So H plus is equal to 24 into P is equal to divided by bicarbonate. And already we know the relation pH is equal to 9 minus log of H plus. So this is calculated with H plus and bicarbonate. Suppose we calculate with standard bicarbonate. The calculated hydrogen concentration the equivalent of standard bicarbonate denotes the non-respiratory hydrogen concentration. So in the same formula, modif Anderson equation, in the, in the place of PCOD, you have to substitute 40. So 24 into 40 divided by standard bicarbonate. If you substitute, we'll be getting 960 by standard bicarbonate. So this denotes a non-respiratory hydrogen concentration. So this is different from hydrogen concentration. Hydrogen concentration denotes a total pH. So this is calculated using PCO2 and bicarbonate. Non-respiratory hydrogen concentration, PCO2 value is taken as 40. And instead of bicarbonate, we have to substitute standard bicarbonate. So non-respiratory hydrogen concentration is equal to 960 divided by standard bicarbonate. And NR pH, non-respiratory pH is equal to 9 minus log of NRH plus. So the relations are clearly shown in the graph. As the standard bicarbonate increases, non-respiratory hydrogen concentration decreases. Or as the standard bicarbonate decreases, the NRPH increases. And base deficit, more negative value of base excess, which is seen in metabolic acidosis, this is related to high non-respiratory hydrogen concentration. So if the non-respiratory hydrogen concentration is very high, it denotes metabolic acidosis. Similarly, higher value of base excess, which is seen in metabolic alkalosis. This is related to lower non-respiratory hydrogen concentration. So this is clearly seen in the graph. As the standard, standard base excess is more negative, the non-respiratory hydrogen concentration is very high. So seen in metabolic acidosis. And standard base excess more positive, the non-respiratory hydrogen concentration is very low, seen in metabolic alkalosis. So the relationship between non-respiratory hydrogen hydrogen ion concentration and Stewart's parameter. So strong ion gap is equal to apparent strong ion difference minus bicarbonate minus ATOT. So bicarbonate and ATOT denotes effective strong ion difference. So strong ion gap is equal to apparent strong ion difference minus effective strong ion difference. So if you substitute, we'll be getting strong apparent strong ion difference minus ATOT plus strong ion gap is equal to bicarbonate. So in this relation, in the right side of the equation, I am I'm multiplying and dividing by standard bicarbonate. In the numerator and denominator, just I am multiplying standard bicarbonate. I am not changing the equation. So I am getting the relation and in the place of standard bicarbonate, I am substituting 960 by NRH plus, which is already derived in the previous slide. And the bicarbonate by standard bicarbonate ratio we will be getting. So the final relation is apparent strong and difference minus ATOT plus strong ion gap is equal to 960 divided by NRH plus into bicarbonate divided by standard bicarbonate. So bicarbonate divided by standard bicarbonate denotes the ratio of 1. So from the relation, from the above equation is very clear. The non-respiratory hydrogen concentration is inversely proportional to the strong ion difference and directly proportional to the total concentration of dissociated weak acids, ATOT. This includes mainly albumin and phosphate. And non-respiratory hydrogen concentration is directly proportional to the anion gap. Anion gap is equal to strong ion gap plus ATOT. So from the relation is very clear. The strong ion difference is higher. The non-respiratory hydrogen concentration will be lower. It, it denotes metabolic alkalosis. Similarly, if the strong ion difference is lower, non-respiratory hydrogen concentration will be higher. That denotes metabolic acidosis because both are inverse related and the strong ion difference value is influenced by the ratio bicarbonate divided by standard bicarbonate and already we discussed this ratio the ratio one which is uh, it increases with pco2 as the pco2 increases this ratio bicarbonate divided by standard bicarbonate also increases and the strong ion difference value is influenced by the ratio which is clearly shown in the above relation So from the above relation, apparent strong ion difference minus ATOT plus strong ion gap is equal to bicarbonate, where anion gap is equal to strong ion gap plus ATOT. So the increased presence of unmeasured ions will not be clearly noticed if the concentration of dissociated weak acids is very low. 
So in the thermal ion gap is equal to strong ion gap plus ATOT. The strong ion gap denotes the unmeasured ions. Suppose the ATOT, which denotes the concentration of albumin phosphate, it is very low. And if the unmeasured ion is very high, both the net effect will be, they can cancel each other. So anion gap may be normal. Anion gap may be normal. So the presence of unmeasured ions will not be clearly seen. So the presence of unmeasured ions is masked due to the alkalizing effect of decreased ATOT. So the anion gap has to be corrected for the serum albumin. Albumin corrected anion gap is anion gap plus 2.5 into 4.4 minus observed albumin in gram per deciliter. So delta gap is directly proportional to the main strong ion difference. So delta gap is equal to main strong ion difference minus 36, where the main strong ion difference denotes sodium minus chloride. So the strong ion difference is inversely related with non recipient hydrogen concentration and the strong ion difference value is influenced by the ratio ratio 1 bicarbonate divided by standard bicarbonate and this ratio alters depending on the values of PCO2. So with this way ratio will increase with increase in PCO2 and decrease with decrease in PCO2. And delta gap, if the delta gap value is more than 6, it can, be, it can denote either metabolic al alkalosis or respiratory acidosis. And previously we discussed delta gap is proportional to strong ion difference. So increased strong ion difference will result in lower non respiratory concentration. This will result in metabolic alkalosis. Also the increased strong ion difference will be seen in increased ratio. So this ratio also increases in respiratory acidosis. So increased delta gap can be seen either in metabolic alkalosis and also in respiratory acidosis. Similarly, delta gap minus 6 lesser strong ion difference. So if that strong ion difference is very low, then the non respiratory ion concept will be very high. That can lead to metabolic acidosis. So non anion gap metabolic acidosis. And similarly, the decreased strong ion difference can also be seen in decreased ratio 1. Because the ratio 1 also decreases with decrease in PCO2. That, are, that is seen in respiratory alkalosis. So bicarbonate as a marker. So apparent strong and difference minus ATOT plus strong and gap is equal to bicarbonate. So the total value of the parameter apparent strong and difference minus ATOT plus strong and gap denotes bicarbonate numerically. Only if all the ions and parameters are measured. But not all the ions are measured routinely. So for practical convenience, main strong and difference and the weak acid albumin concentration can be compared and correlated with the bicarbonate to find the causative mechanism of the metabolic acid based disturbances. So some examples are shown here. So suppose we look at one year uh, serial number one. If you look at one year the pH, PCO2 and bicarbonate, it can be normal. But if you look at other values, anion gap, current anion gap and the main strong ion difference and delta gap, this will help to find the causative mechanism of the metabolic acid based disorders. So the anion gap has to be corrected. Why the anion gap has to be corrected? Because anion gap is equal to strong anion gap plus ATOT. So ATOT denotes the concentration of dissociated non volatile weak acid, mainly albumin. So in the presence of low albumin, the albumin anion gap, it will be lower. So it, it has to be corrected. And the delta gap is proportional to the main strong ion difference. Main strong ion difference is a sodium minus chloride difference. If you look at the first example, the so sodium minus chloride, 145 minus 100, the main strong ion difference is 45. So normally it can be from 34 to 38. So the main strong ion difference is increased. So I told you the strong ion difference and NRH plus are inversely related. So if strong ion difference is increased, it denotes metabolic alkalosis. So in this case, the anion gap is elevated. Also, the metabolic alkalosis component is also present. And the second case, the anion gap, the corrected anion gap is also within 
the normal range. So delta gap is not applicable. If the anion gap is normal, we will not apply delta gap. And for the third case, the correct anion gap is increased. The anion gap is normal, but the aluminum concentration is low. So we have to either use strong anion gap or the corrected anion gap. Anion gap is increased. So the main strong ion difference is reduced 23. So the strong ion difference and NRH plus are inversely related. So it is if the strong ion difference is reduced, NRH plus is increased. So that denotes metabolic acidosis. So one more another metabolic acidosis. Normal anion gap metabolic acid is also present. In the fourth case also, the anion gap is elevated, but the strong ion difference is elevated. The difference between sodium and chloride, 125 minus 75 is 50. So it is elevated, denotes metabolic alkalosis compound is also present. And the fifth case, the anion gap is also elevated. If you apply the correct anion gap, but the, the strong ion difference is reduced. If the strong ion difference is reduced, it denotes the metabolic acidosis component is also another. The strong ion difference is reduced. NRH plus will be more. So NRH plus will be increased in metabolic acidosis. So from this very clear, the delta gap is directly proportional to main strong ion difference. So delta gap is equal to strong and main strong ion difference minus 36. So understand the relationship apparent strong difference minus ATOD plus strong and gap is equal to 960 divided by NRH plus into ratio 1. But ratio 1 is bicarbonate divided by standard bicarbonate helps in correlating the various parameters. Also the bicarbonate, the total value is apparent strong and difference, apparent strong and difference minus ATOD plus strong and gap is equal to bicarbonate. So bicarbonate numerically same but we are not calculating all the ions. So for practical purposes, we can compare and correlate the Stewart's acid parameters with the bicarbonate to find out the cause for metabolic acid disturbances. Conclusion, the normal ratios derived using actual bicarbonate, standard bicarbonate and carbonic acid values render some clues in discriminating various acid-based disturbances. The applied equation that correlates the strong ion, different, strong ion gap, anion gap, strong ion difference, delta gap and non dissipate hydrogen concentration helps in understanding the causative mechanism of the metabolic acid-based disturbances. The concept of non dissipate hydrogen concentration forms a connecting link within, between the various acid-based approaches required for better understanding of the ABG interpretation. Thank you. And these are my references. I thank, I thank one and all for giving me this opportunity to present my research findings in this international conference. Thank you.